babes and welcome back to my channel. I'm Miss Mila Rose and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a very, very personal story of mine. One that is going to be just the first part of quite the adventure. This is just the start and the very beginning of my adult story times that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. This video is going to be a pretty long one, so if you want you can pause now and get your snacks for this video. Otherwise, if you're all set and ready to hear my story, let's get right into the video. The story takes place when I was still living in Vancouver and I was attending a 3D arts and animation college. I was in my second year and it was a two-year program and I was very close to graduating from this program. And I was intending to move back to Toronto, which was where I was born and raised, and I was pretty strapped on cash at that time. I actually had ulterior plans to move somewhere. Uh, it was to Guam, and I was very strapped on cash, so I couldn't afford it. It was like $4,000 round trip to Guam when I looked up the prices and I can afford this out of the amount of money that I had saved up being a college student. So I was stressing out and I really didn't know how I'd make this money in a few weeks of time. Now, I actually never had a job while I was living in Vancouver. I applied to many, 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 many jobs but my school schedule was all over the place. I had morning classes, I had afternoon classes, I had evening classes. Every single day varied, and each class was four hours long. This made it very impossible for me to get hired because no one liked my schedule. I couldn't accommodate who or what they needed for their jobs, and weekends were impossible to find for jobs because there are a lot of students in Vancouver and they all strapped down those weekend jobs. So I was living off of the bare minimum when I was in Vancouver and I will get into maybe in a later date of what I was using to get by but right now it's not important. What's important for you guys to know is that I was living in Vancouver at this time, I really wanted to go to Guam, and I was really strapped on cash, and I didn't know how I was going to afford it in a few weeks period. So the date was getting really close to my graduation date, and I only had about three or four weeks left before I was graduating. I was freaking out and I really just wanted to get the money so I could go. So I got really desperate and I started Googling where I can get fast cash. And at this point, I was desperate, so I was ready to take basically anything that I could find that I knew would work. And the first thing that I found was stripping. And honestly, I was all for it. I was about to start applying for a stripping job or go to a stripper club and say, hey, I want this job. I was going to start right away. Uh, the only reason why I didn't get into stripping is because one of my friends admitted to me that she didn't see me as a stripper at all. I was very shy. I was very quiet. I dancing was not my thing, especially not in a crowd. I did have a lot of stage fright when I was younger as well. That doesn't help. Um, but yeah, I just wasn't a good dancer anyway. I didn't know at the time that you didn't need to know how to dance technically to be a stripper, but I still assumed because, you know, it's stripper dance. Um, it just wasn't, wasn't for me because I, I couldn't dance. <laughs> So I was still looking for something that was going to get me fast cash and I knew that the adult industry was loaded with cash for fast, fast fixes. So I was looking in that area, that specific area, and that's where I came across escorting on Backpage. 
ad after ad after ad for escort services on Backpage and requesting for new new girls to be working as an escort. And I actually signed up for, I think, the first or the second one that I found in the listings. I was so desperate. I was ready. They All they asked for you was to send in your stats, to send in a few good photos of yourself. But I sent in what they wanted, my phone number, um, my email. And they got back to me within a few hours. I remember I in the email I said, hey, I really want to start as soon as I can. Um, I only thing is, is that I can't start until like Thursday, Thursday afternoon or something like that. It was something because I was I had classes still going on, but um, since I was finishing up the program, all I had to do was finish up my portfolio and turn that in. So uh, you were given, I think, a couple of weeks just to work on your portfolio for the end of the course, uh, the program, and you were good to go. So all I had to do was render at that point, I think. It was like a little bit of work left that I had to do, but it was just rendering out my scene. I had this huge environment scene that I had built that um, had landscape, it had mountains, rocks, grass, trees, buildings, um, that sort of thing. So I had to render it out on uh, computers. I had to use an entire lab full of computers to get this thing rendered. It was a nightmare because I was running into complications doing that. So yeah, I let this guy know that I couldn't start until like Thursday afternoon or something. So he got back to me and he said, great, so how about we make the interview for that day when you're done your classwork and you can meet me at X subway station and I'll pick you up there and then we will have the interview. And so I was like, great, I had his number and I went, waited for Thursday and I made sure that all of my lady parts were shaved and all that because I had no idea what I was getting myself into to be honest. I didn't do any pre-research or anything. I I kind of figured that I might start the job on the same day but I honestly had no idea what I was getting into. I had no previous knowledge of the adult industry really. So I was going in this with absolutely no idea what I was in for. So I showed up at the subway station on that day that we determined would be the day of our interview. I was on time or a little early probably and I met him at the subway station. He just parked his car at the subway station and rolled down his window and asked, hey, are you so-and-so? And I said, yes, that's me. And I hopped in the car and he just started driving and he started asking me, hey, do you, do you want a coffee? And I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love a coffee. Um, so we, we were driving to a Starbucks at that time and he started asking me some questions, basic questions about myself. One of the questions that I remember him asking that I was a little thrown off by is that he asked me if I was religious. Now, I'm not religious at all. Um, my dad was an atheist and my mom was highly religious and we were going to church basically every Sunday until I and my brother as well didn't want to go anymore and we were really rebelling from the church thing because we both just thought it was really annoying and we weren't religious in that aspect well my brother was but that's a whole nother story but I didn't want to go to church anymore and it wasn't that I wasn't and it wasn't that I was atheist, I just wasn't religious, so I explained that to him, and for some reason that was one of the questions that he was really looking forward to me answering for him. Uh, he asked me if I was a virgin, which at the time was not true. I had had my first, but that was as far as my sexual experiences had gone. And he asked me when the last time I had sex was. He asked me a handful of questions like why I wanted to do this. Um, I believe I just told him that I had some income goals that I needed to make pretty fast. And we got a coffee from Starbucks. We, we reached there. I got a black coffee. I believe he did too. And then he let me know that he was going to drive me to the apartment, the condo that they worked out of as in-call, 
and he was going to explain to me how they work once we got there a little bit more in details since it wasn't actually too far off because he picked me up in downtown Vancouver and then it was literally just down a few streets and we were at the condo so you're really close and when we got there it was a pretty nice apartment building a condo and we got into the elevator we went to the apartment and he had me sit down with him and he pulled out a notebook with a pen and he said okay so we're gonna go through some terms with you because the way we work is you actually operate with a phone and you take your own calls you take your own texts that kind of thing so i was also my own call taker and i was going to be working at this in call now a lot of agencies will have a call taker that they hire but this one was much smaller, low end. Um, they didn't have someone hired to do that. So the girl would actually do that for themselves, for the company. Um, and I believe the cut was 50-50. And that's kind of standard, I believe, for Asgore companies. So I didn't know a lot of these terms like BBJ, BBW. There was also um, DATY. I'm not going to go and explain what these terms are. If you want, you can look them up on Urban Dictionary or something. But yeah, there was a lot of terms and I, for the life of me, struggled to even remember these terms. So the notebook came in handy because I used the pen and I was writing down the these letters and these codes for certain things so that I'd know what these meant when guys would text me or ask me on the phone what services I offered. So he just explained to me that uh, that's how it worked. So I would be taking my own phone calls, just talking to them on the phone, texting them, and enticing them to want to come over and see me. Then I would give them the information for the address, the buzzer code. So after this guy finished teaching me the vocabulary and kind of how I would go about doing the end call, taking my own phone calls, getting people, enticing people to come see me, giving them the address information, the buzzer, all that. He started to go into more of a detail of how to go about greeting men and escorting them into the apartment. Now, again, I had no idea what I was in for. I was all for ready to work that day. I mean, that is why I got myself ready because I wanted to. I wanted to start making money. I was ready. So he actually brought me to the door and I think he could tell I was extremely nervous. I was extremely nervous. I was extremely shelled in. I was just so new to this. I had never opened up myself like this before. And honestly, I was actually quite a shy person before being introduced to the adult industry. And it's not the until the adult industry that I was actually brought out of my shell. So this was actually me, still a really shy, quiet, secure girl, going into this situation like, oh my god, I am literally going completely vulnerable here and I've never done this before and this is scary and what the heck. Um, so yeah, I'm at this door with him and he actually starts going through step by step with me from the moment the knock on the door comes to the end situation. <laughs> so he kind of pretends to be a client with me here. He does the knock on the door and he says, okay, so how are you going to greet me? You're going to open the door. You're going to say hello. You're going to give me a kiss on the cheek. You're going to hold my hand. You're going to take me and lead me to the bedroom, which is over there. And then he explained that once you're in the room, you collect the money for the, do the donation is what they also called it. And then you're going to send them off to the bathroom so that they can take a shower. And then you are going to go through with your session when he's out of the shower. So he didn't just explain this verbally. He actually explained this quite physically. 
And I'm not gonna lie, this guy was quite good looking. He was fit, he was older 20s, and I was actually 20 years old at that time. So after he verbally told me, okay, this is how you're gonna play it out, he actually went ahead and said, now show me what you're going to do when your client arrives at the door. So he pretended to be the client as per usual and knocked at the door and had me follow through the steps. So I gave him a kiss on the cheek and I did this because to me it felt a little weird because he was technically my boss at this point, right? So I was weirded out. I didn't know how this sort of thing worked. I was very on the edge like okay I would definitely do that with a client but you're my boss right <laughs> so I kissed him on the cheek and I greeted him and I, I took his hand and I led him to the room and I kind of stopped at the front of the door of the bedroom because I was like okay what that that's kind of all it is right and then the situation in the bedroom right and the shower of course um, but he wanted a little bit more out of that with me and I don't know to this day if this was solely for him or if he wanted this just so that I could really open up and he could know for sure that I was going to do this job in full. I don't really know, but regardless, he had me continue from the outside of the bedroom all the way inside the bedroom and this is where he kind of took a lead because he could tell I was nervous he could tell that I didn't really know where to go from there and not necessarily that I didn't know where to go from there but I was a little bit more submissive chewed back then so I would expect the guy to be more leading with me and so that's kind of exactly what he did he started kissing me uh, and then he laid me on the bed and we were kind of just clothed kissing and he was on top of me and he started feeling on my body over my clothes and then he led my hand to his manly parts <laughs> and then he took out his manly part and had me play with it. And then he started taking off my top, and so I started taking off his top because I assumed that that's what he wanted me to do. And then we just kind of did it with a condom, always with a condom. We had a drawer full of condoms, and when we were low or when we were out, we always purchased more so we were never low there we never had a shortage of those so after i basically just had done it with my boss we went out of the room and he said okay let's get your ad up for back page so he told me to let me know his stats like my hair color my eye color uh, my height my weight all these stats all over again so that he could input these these information bits into my ad that he was putting on for a back page and that I would also need some photos so he actually had his camera equipment ready and we went into the bedroom and he had me take a few poses for the camera and these pictures were some of the most cringiest pictures ever I hated them to this day and I just want to burn them out of my memory for good they were such bad photos and I only took one set for this particular job because I only worked with them for two weeks. Uh, neither of us saw the point of doing a new photo shoot. So I kind of just got stuck with really bad photos for this company for the whole time I was working for them and my ads were getting up, going up. So those photos went on my ad and then the last thing he needed was my working name. And I wasn't sure what name to use. I was just kind of stumped when he asked me, what name do you want to use? I was stumped. I was like, oh, I guess I am going to need a name, huh? <laughs> I'm not going to use my real name. So he just looked at me and was like, we're going to go with Mila. I like Mila. And I was like, I like Mila. Because <laughs> I liked Mila kind of Kunis. So I was really happy with the name Mila. 
So that's the name that we went with. And then we just put up the ad and he turned on the phones and he said, you're live. Here's the phone. He handed me the phone and I started taking phone calls and texts right away. I got an appointment and it was scheduled for like 4.30, which was in the next like half an hour or so. So I was nervous and excited because I was like, oh my God, like I already got my first customer. I already got a pay basically for just showing up to my uh, interview basically so I was pretty stoked I was happy about it and I was nervous though because this was going to be my first appointment but at the same time since I already just done it with my boss I mean how much more vulnerable can I get with a customer so while I was waiting for my appointment my boss actually introduced me to another guy that was in his mid 30s I think and both of these guys actually ran this business together and they were supposedly long-term friends since like high school or something so they knew each other extremely well they ran the business they started the business together so I just kind of got to know this guy chatting him up he was uh really really cool to talk to which helped my nerves a little bit so I was just chatting with him and uh, I think he was eating like Subway or something. <laughs> he came in and he was just eating and we we're talking and I let him know, okay, yeah, this is the time my appointment's at. And he wanted to know that so he could be out before the guy would arrive. So we offered 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and an hour appointments, I believe, at this location. And this one was 30 minute appointment and it was pretty straightforward. And then my appointment left, I texted out and the guy showed up and he was like, look at you, you got your first appointment. And he like tapped me on my butt, like go get him girl. <laughs> and he was like, okay, here's the phone. Um, I want you to just keep going for the rest of the evening. And he's like, how late do you want to go until? Um, and I was like, uh, I don't know, pretty late. I can go as late as you want me to go. So he's like, okay, so how about we put you on until like one in the morning, I think it was, for your first night. And I was like, yeah, sure, that works for me. So yeah, I worked until about one in the morning. I was really busy. I got like $1,100, so I took home $550 that night. And he basically told me, okay, so I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna count the cash, and then I'm going to split it for you to just to make sure that it's everything's right. And make sure you get yourself a taxi home because it's just the safest thing for you to do. So that's what I did. I got myself a taxi home. And yeah, he just counted his car for me. It was 550 for my cut and it was, it was a pretty easy day, so then he let me know, okay, like you did really good, when do you want to come back in and do your shifts? So I basically ended up doing like starting at, I believe, 12 or 2 p.m. every day, and I think I went until about 12 a.m., so I ended up working, I believe, like 12-hour shifts every single day. In my first week, I was extremely busy and was awesome. Um although I was really sore after that week. So I did end up taking a week off and then I worked another week before my portfolio show and my graduation date. And then I had a flight out back to Toronto after that. So this was my first adult experience in the industry and it was a crazy experience and I really did just go full out there. Um, but I really did enjoy it, to be honest. I would say that there were a couple clients that I had that made my life kind of not the best, but I got through it and I kept my spirits up and I didn't let them get me down. So I will talk about those with you. So the first guy that I had an issue with, and this one really freaked me out, um, this customer that I had, he was, I believe he booked for a 45 or an hour, I don't completely remember. He was sweating all over me, and that wasn't even the worst part, but I just kind of dealt with the sweat. I, I asked him, hey, do you, want, do you want me to get a towel? Because he was really dripping like crazy. So I got a fresh towel, I, I gave it to him, he was using it constantly. It was like September or October, so he didn't really have excuse to be sweating that much in the fall, but he was. And he and I were going through a session, we were having intercourse, and 
when he finished, I had no idea because I had put a condom on him, but when he pulled out, the condom was on the floor and he had just finished inside of me. And I turned to him, I looked at him, I was like, did you just take the condom off? And he said blatantly, you're so gorgeous, you're so gorgeous, I couldn't not take it off. And I was so infuriated with him, I was so mad at him, but in the situation, I didn't completely know what to do. I was like, he already did it, he already paid for the session too, do I just, what do I do? So I was really mad, I told him, you can't do that. I just kind of sighed and I finished up the last few minutes with him and I saw him out the door and then I texted one of the guys, the boss, that I said out to and I said, this guy just snuck his condom off and he came to me and I, I don't know what to do. I am freaking out. So he told me, oh, that's really shitty, you really need to watch these guys. Uh, I'm going to come with you, we're going to go get plan B. So I was like, oh, right, you can get plan B, which is the miracle bill if you have an accident. So I was really thankful for that because I actually wasn't on birth control. I planned on getting birth control for these two weeks that I was working here, but I hadn't gotten it yet. So this was a big like, I need to get birth control right away just in case of accidents like this. Of course, there's bigger risks like STDs and whatnot, but at least you can use birth control to prevent one of the problems, which would be getting pregnant off of this. So I ended up getting plan B for this and took care of that situation right away. So that wasn't a problem anymore, although I was really still infuriated with this customer, especially because he actually booked another appointment with me. And so on the phone, I actually don't have them saved as numbers or names, they're just numbers. So I had no idea who I'm talking to at what time, unless it's a text conversation. So I didn't know that this guy was coming to the door. He opened the door, I saw him, I said, mm-mm. No, I, after what happened in our last appointment, I am not accepting you today. So I just closed the door. So I already closed the door on this guy after I'd even texted into my boss already. And then I had to tell him that I closed the door on him because it's the same client that had taken off his condom during his session and I was not okay with seeing this guy again. And he was okay with that, but he told me like, hey, you need to save this guy as do not answer or do not book with so that he's in the system and he is a blocked customer. And that way the situation won't happen again because it's really frustrating when you save yourself some time for a customer who ends up being someone who you are not even okay with seeing. So that made perfect sense. So I actually learned then that I can actually blacklist certain customers and that's what I ended up doing for a couple guys. So the second incident that happened was a theft situation. And this one, I am such a naive person and I'm really upset that this happened to me, but it was a learning experience and I'll explain why. So I had this young Asian customer come in and I greeted him at the door and then I asked him to pay for the session. So he gave me the donation and then I just held it in my hand. I counted it and then still holding it in my hand, we went into the room and I said, okay, I'd like you to shower. And then I gave him this towel and he went to go shower. And as he was showering, I went to go slip the cash into a drawer because I was told by my boss to put the cash in somewhere that was secure and safe and hidden while the client was in the bathroom showering. So that's exactly what I was doing. However, this customer opened the door and as I was leaving, as I closed the door and I was leaving, he actually just kind of popped his head out of the shower. I just thought that was a little weird that he'd do that. So then he left the room, came into the bedroom, and he told me, um, I want you to shower now. And I was like, well, I already showered, but if you really want me to shower that badly, okay, I guess I'll go shower. That was the biggest mistake I had made because while I was in the shower, he must have went into the drawer because he saw where I put the cash and he took it. 
So I actually had the second boss, the older man that came to see me when I was doing my first appointment. He actually is around like every single day that I'm working. But he comes in to collect the cash every now and then. Just so everything adds up. And they're still learning to trust me at this point. This was like, I think my third day working. So he comes in and he's counting and I was just waiting on my next appointment or it got slow or something. And he realized that the count was incorrect and there was missing a certain amount for an entire like half hour session, which was this guy's amount session. And I was like, there's, there's no way it's off. And then I started counting it myself and I was like, it is, it is off like a half an hour session. What's going on? And I was literally just walking around the room. Like, did I leave? Did I put the cash here? Did I get the cash here? And I was checking everywhere and I was just walking around thinking to myself, like, where could I have gone? It had to have been in the store. That's where I put all of the cash and it should have added up. 100% it should have added up. I was just going through my mind over and over, like, how am I missing this cash? I don't understand. And I was freaking out, too, because at this point, I'm also liable, and they are trying to trust me. So if I am missing a whole half an hour's worth of an appointment, how are they supposed to trust me? So I was freaking out, not only because there's money missing, but because I my trust and liability was on the stake here. So this guy was actually messaging the boss about this and I think the boss thought that I had taken the money and it was just straight up lying which was 110% not true at all. But I could understand completely where he was coming from and thinking that I just theft this money. But the older man, he actually believed me and he was like, no nah, dude, like she got gypped. She got gypped. And I then realized that holy shit like when I was putting the cash in the drawer he looked over outside of the bathroom as I was leaving back to go into the bedroom so he must have seen where the cash was and he must have taken it when I was showering why else would he make me shower I did think that was weird so I told that to the older guy the bo the second boss and he said okay yeah you were definitely robbed by this guy and I was just apologizing like oh my god I'm so sorry and he was like don't worry about it like at the end of the day you're just the one giving a free ride here and it's fine. So I was just really freaking out and upset because I knew that they were just trying to learn to trust me and I had already messed up and let this guy rob me. So they basically let me know that in order to not let that happen again, because it could have been way worse. This guy was actually the first appointment since the last cash was checked and collected. So he could have actually taken way more than just his appointments worth of cash, which is really good for these guys to be coming in to collect the cash every now and then. So they actually had me just put the cash in different places and under mattresses and the microwave, different places so that if a customer did figure out one of the places, they wouldn't find the whole chunk of cash, which made complete sense. So that's kind of what I was doing after that. And I never had an incident again. And I never, ever, ever showered while a client was in the room because I need to watch them the entire time. Not to mention from the first customer, I was definitely checking constantly to make sure that the condom was still on him because I was not going to go through another repeat situation of that. So yeah, those are the two instances that I had that were quite annoying, frustrating, and scary for me as being brand new to the adult industry, especially in the escorting world as an in-call girl. But I got through the bads and I ended up making my target goal of $4,000 in two weeks of working, which was amazing and I was so happy because that meant that I could take my trip to Guam like I had planned. So yeah, that is the story of how I first got into the adult industry. I started out as a call girl in Vancouver and then I moved to Toronto and that's where my adult industry experience kind of really took off. Now, when I finished up the two-week period and I took my flight out, I actually went to Toronto first. That's where I went. 
before going to Guam, but I actually vowed that I would never ever work in the edit industry again, and that was all I was going to do was the two weeks just to earn the 4000 and that was it, and I was done for good, and I really believed that I was done and that I was going to go back. And a lot of people t would tell me, once you start, like my bosses would say, once you start, you're never going to stop because it gets addicting, the money gets addicting. And I was like, but I'm not that kind of girl. I don't, I don't do drug trips and stuff. I've never done drugs or anything like that. I don't get addicted. So I was like, I have a better head on my shoulders than that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to fall into this. You start and you never end in the adult industry kind of thing. But, <laughs> look at me now, right? But I did end up quitting the call girl stuff eventually. It just doesn't quite end there. So that's where I'm going to leave this story at for today. And I have a lot more to share with you guys leading into Toronto, leading into working as a cam girl. But I am going to leave it here. And if you guys want to hear my next part of this series, get me 30 likes on this video and I will be filming you guys another one of these story time videos very soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you liked, please give a big thumbs up, subscribe, turning the notifications on down below, and I'll see you guys next Friday for another video. Yo